Hello watercolor lovers, welcome to my YouTube channel of watercolor impressions. I've done a lot of dog painting tutorial in our channel, but this one I'll do a voiceover and explain my techniques and process in watercolors. Uh, this painting was done for a friend's kid for his birthday. Before we get on to it, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. Uh, please free to download the drawing template from the video description. So whenever I paint, I start with a light wash in watercolors, that's how it works. But as you can see in the reference, there's a lot of warmth happening behind it. So I'm kind of like uh, painting the background first. Then I went uh, ahead and uh, jumped on his ears. So when I do the first wash, I use a lot of water in my brush because uh, I want to create the light first. So and I also want to make it lighter. So in order to watercolor to work, you have to layer it in a way that uh, you start from the light and you go mid-tones and you add shadows and darker tones at the end. Whenever you paint dog or any kind of animals or portraits, uh, make sure you get the lightness first because uh, one proportions here and there and if you miss any kind of angles are missing, um, it doesn't look good. So then there's no point of we are adding paint on top of our drawing. Um, I think that's why I... <laughs> Like, uh, lay away from uh, painting animals or portraits. I, you know, do with landscape because landscape are easy and you can, you know, come up with your own impressions as well. So let's jump onto the painting. So whenever I apply colors for the first wash, I squint my eyes and I ask myself if the color is in uh, the warmer side or the cooler side. So whenever I see a cooler side, I'll just add uh, the cool colors. When I see the warmer side, I mix warmer colors and I will do it. But being said that. Whenever I add colors, I make sure that I don't go vibrant as well because um, uh, some people like vibrant paintings, but I like realism. So I try to match uh, the impressions as close as possible to my reference. Um, you could see I'm mixing a lot of colors, even though there's a lot of uh, bright colors in my uh, on, the, on his neck. Uh, I'm using cobalt blue and I'm also using um, a uh, lot of white paint in it uh, so sometimes when i want to get uh, light colors i take a color and i'll use white paint in it as well uh, for the white paint you can use chinese white um, and you can also use gouache i usually use gouache at the end to bring back some of the eyelids which i missed and uh, you could see uh, based on the reference i'm throwing colors there's no logic to it i just want to get uh, get this painting started and uh, the other tip I can give uh, when you draw animals or portraits or any other characters, uh, make sure to get the 3D look. Uh, I've seen a lot of watercolors which is super flat. If anything that I want to avoid in my painting is the flat look because watercolor tends to go dull because uh, people tend to stop at the first wash and they don't go push it further in the second wash or the third wash. Um, as you can see, I started the, the shadows at top of his head. For shadows, I used um, a Windsor Violet and a little bit of white paint in it. Uh, that's what I was telling about. Uh, whenever I want to get light colors, I use white paint and mix with it and I add it. Uh, a lot of people doesn't do it and uh, white paint is like comes in quite handy. So make sure to use it. To create any forms, I take a color what I see in the reference and I paint it. Then I use clean water to soften the edge. Uh, so it also creates like a 3D forms. Um, where the bottom of his stomach turns, okay, you can, as you can see it. We are officially done with the first wash and uh, let's start adding some uh, mid-tones or shadows in our uh, painting. So you can see I started with the uh, top left ear. You can see uh, when you squint your eyes, you can see there's a darker patterning happening on his ears. So that also uh, gives a shadow as well as details for his ears. Um, uh, if I squint my eyes and I checked it and there's a lot of warmth happening, so I'm using um, cadmium orange and a little bit of Windsor violet and a little bit of uh, neutral tint in it to get the darker value in my uh, in my pigment and uh, I went and uh, added some details on his right ears so in his right ears is it's almost blending with the background so I just want to uh, make it like a confidence stroke on him because I want you know his face on the left hand side to pop more because there's light and shadow and it creates a contrast so um, i won't put any details on his uh, ears but now i added a there is also a darker patch happening in his left uh, left eye so i also added that using burnt amber a little bit of neutral tint in it 
So for his eyes, I'm using pure neutral tint and a little bit of water in it. And I'm squinting my eyes, I'm seeing the shape uh, of his eyes. I'm just adding that. And I'm going to add the nose as well because it's also on the darker side. I'm just leaving his eyelids for his nose at the bottom of his nose. So once we add the nose, you could see uh, the whole uh, the dog kind of came alive. So I'll keep layering it until I'm happy with the darker pigment. You can also see uh, for his mouth and there's also darker things happening uh, in his bottom of his mouth as well. And I'm just using um, a neutral tint for it. And you could see I took clean water and I also created a little bit of forms in it. And I also saw that there's a lot of uh, warmth happening there as well. So I'm using um, cadmium orange and I also have this uh, pink rose pigment uh, which I uh, got it for doing furrows. So I also added that as well to have some pigment consistency on his mouth. So there's also a form happening, uh, the transition happening on his uh, neck and the right side of his shoulder so um, the same thing I'm going to introduce pigment and I'm going to use clean water to soften it to get that uh, transition happening from his head to the neck I'll keep re uh, repeating this process uh, till I'm happy with my tones and forms I'll keep building it uh, this is when you don't need any techniques or any artistic skills uh, where you need just patience I wish I have some but uh, I'll keep doing it till I'm happy with it. So uh, you can also see that uh, for his eye socket, it looked really plain and I took a little bit of uh, dirt um, in my palette and I'll just soften the edge so they give the forms for his eye socket as well. Um, I have uh, a lot of people say that why am I uh, palette really dirty? So for this reason, it also gives a little bit of colors in my palette so I'll, I don't have to mix any different colors. So. I can just throw here and there to get some color variations in my painting as well. Now you can see um, his forms are not reading that dominant on his shoulders. So I'm going to use cobalt blue and a little bit of uh, neutral tint in it. So I'm going to create the form from a gradient happening from the top to bottom. So it also creates some forms for his uh, neck as well. So once I'm happy with it, I'm kind of adding the darker patches on his skin. So there's like he has a lot of uh, darker uh, patches. So I'm using around amber. A little bit of burnt amber in it uh, to get some value in it. Uh, for bottom of his uh, legs, uh, I'm not worried about that much because the overall motive for this painting is to get his face and the shadows, light and shadows happening with a lot of contrast in it. Uh, you could see at the bottom I also had a lot of um, introducing a little bit of color variation so it doesn't look flat. So wherever uh, transitioning happening, I will just add a darker value there. So can see where the legs are changing so I'm using using a neutral tint for it now let's focus on the background uh, the background looks super flat and uh, you could see there's a lot of shadow happening on the fence uh, in the background so for that I'm using gray amber and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre in it and uh, wherever he meets the background I'm gonna go darker so that it brings him in the front so you could see um, since there's a lot of warmth behind them, so I'm going to introduce some uh, darker, cooler colors. Uh, in order to do that, you could use uh, a neutral tint. I'm also using neutral tint and a little bit of French ultramarine blue in it so that I'm getting that cool colors in it as well. But once we have the darker values begin, begin the background, you could see uh, the old, uh, the dog came in the front and the light popped up in our painting. So we are at the uh, end of our painting journey, So, but now it's a matter of adding eyelids and uh, calling it a day. Uh, so I'm using gouache for it and sometimes I use Chinese white, it's uh, up to an artist's preference. So whenever you add eyelids, squint your eyes and it will give a cue uh, wherever the eyelids are happening. Uh, especially uh, there's also some eyelids in his eyes, so I added that. And there's also eyelids happening on his nose as well and which also have a softer uh, transitioning eyelid so i make sure that i get that because that's really important in when you paint dog and there's also a light picking through um, on his leg too and there's also a rim light happening um, on the right hand side i add that as well i caught up with the eyelids and i also uh, noticed that um, his nose looks weird as soon as i have that eyelid but i want to have a lighter tone on top of his nose because i want the forms to be round so I'm using um, uh, clean water and I'm taking a little bit of tissue and get, getting rid of some of the paint. 
and you could see and I also went darker on the nose at the top so that you know uh, it also paints them in the front as well so for bringing it I'm using neutral tint I'm shaping a little bit better to see it um, have more variation on its nose to read better in the form as you can see once we added the darker tone um, there's a little bit of form happened in the nose as well so I will clean it up a little bit here and there using um, the clean water and a little bit of uh, gouache in it so the darker pigment also goes all the way to this um, at the at the top of his mouth so i'm using clean water and i'm bringing it all the way to the top of his mouth and uh that's it folks uh we are out of our painting journey and hope you guys learned something and this is the final step i usually forget to do every time so i'm gonna do it i'm gonna sign it and uh that's it folks. Thanks again for watching this video tutorial with me. If you're an artist or a person who enjoys animal painting, I created a playlist especially for you guys. Let me know what you learned from this video and what's your favorite color in this painting. If you have any other requests or subjects you want me to cover in watercolors, let me know in the comments or write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com. Thanks again for watching this tutorial. Please hit that subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel and please do share with your friends and family and uh, good luck with your painting folks